Hello, I'm Meredith and I'm a Makerspace Mentor in the Hub at the Grays Lake Area Public Library. I'm here to bring you another Art with Flair program in which we'll be painting this pretty spring picture from socialartworking.com entitled Floral Country Fence. Now, I did glance through the step-by-step -step instructions uh, ahead of time and there will be a lot of blending of colors and a lot of reusing your brush without rinsing first. So be um, aware of that as you're looking through each step. And when it says just to use the same brush, that means they don't want you rinsing it off or anything. They want you to use it with the paint that it has on it. And then you're adding another paint or you're mixing another shade of color um, with which to paint. And then on the canvas, we'll be blending a lot of different colors as well. There's a lot of um, subtle shading in this painting that I think is gonna look really interesting. So thank you very much for joining me today. Let's get started. As usual, I'd like to go over the colors that you'll need for this painting first, and then all the other supplies. So we'll start with seven colors. Burnt Umber, Cobalt Blue, Deep Yellow, Green Oxide, Mars Black, Titanium White, and Violet. Then I have my canvas and my pattern and my carbon paper to trace it. I have my supply of paintbrushes, a couple of glasses of water, paper towels, of course, and then I have my picture and my step-by-step -step instructions nearby. I also have a couple of paper plates with which to mix the colors because this one does ask for a lot of color mixing and blending. And so um, in your take and make kit, I have included two small paper plates instead of just one to give you just a little bit more space to do that with. Time to get started on the painting. So this painting has us tracing the pattern on the canvas before we do anything else, uh, which is fairly typical. So I have my carbon paper on top of my canvas, and then I lay the pattern over that. I line up the edges of the pattern with the edges of my canvas as best I can. And then I just start tracing over all of the lines here with a pencil or a pen. You'll want to be firm with your strokes just so that it transfers well to the canvas, but you don't have to press super hard. So this one has a fair number of lines that we need to transfer, so um, it's gonna take me a little while to trace the pattern. Um, and I won't make you watch all of that. Um, but I did want to mention, for those of you who don't know this trick, um, obviously the carbon paper isn't as big as the canvas. So when I'm ready to move to the other side, I anchor the pattern down to the canvas. And then I move the carbon paper over to the other side. and then I can continue tracing on this side of the paper without having moved my pattern so that all of my lines on the canvas will line up when I'm done. So I'll go ahead and work on the tracing and I will see you back in a few minutes. Welcome back. I have the pattern all traced on my canvas and I'm going to go ahead and start working on the first step. I just wanted to just uh, mention the brushes that they mention in the instructions. They call for a three quarter inch flat and then a number two round, which is this uh, more pointed top, and then a number 12 bright, which I believe this is not quite as big as a number 12. But uh, I always have a selection of brushes that I'm using so I don't necessarily stick to just the brushes that they call for here. 
If you don't have brushes of your own, we do have brushes that you can um, check out from the library to use for your painting and then just uh, make sure that you rinse them well and return them. All right, step number one. It says use the bigger brush to mix two parts titanium white with a small amount of deep yellow. When they talk about a part, they're talking about uh, dipping the brush that you're gonna be using and pulling out that much paint. Basically just load the brush with that paint. So I have that of titanium white. I'm gonna go ahead and use another brush and then one part of the deep yellow. And I'll go ahead and I'll mix those up. And if there's a color that you don't like, feel free to add or subtract. I mean, you can't subtract obviously, but feel free to add some other color to whatever it is that you've created. For instance, I think I want that a little bit lighter. So I'm going to use the mix to paint outward from the top right corner of the canvas until the mix is all used. And I think I mean the mix on my brush. Because if I look at the picture, it doesn't actually go that far. They do things down in the corner here. And at this point, it doesn't really matter if I go over the tracing lines because I know I'm going to be covering that again with, uh, with the other colors of paint. I just don't want to eradicate them completely so I can't see the, where, the, where they are. Okay. Well, I'm running out of the paint, that color paint in my brush. So I'll go ahead and move on to the next step or the next part of that, which is to use the same brush, I'm not going to rinse it, to blend a small amount of green oxide into the mix. So just dip my brush in the green oxide here small amount and use short choppy strokes. They don't have as much up here, but they, it seems to start closer to the plants. And then as you move towards the out of, outer edge of the canvas, the green gets fainter. Okay. And then it says to save the brush for step two. So I'm, again, I'm not going to rinse it. I'm just going to hold on to it and then move on to step two. Okay, step two. Using the same brush, mix four parts green oxide with one part Mars black. I'm going to actually use another brush to pull the paint onto my mixing plate here. One two, three, four, uh, seems a little light, and then so four parts green oxide with one part Mars black. Since this is a smaller brush, I'll pull out a little bit more, and then it wants me to use this brush to mix those. 
So then it looks like we're going to get that yellow in there as well. All right, so we want us to use this mix to paint the dark areas. Paint the dark areas behind the leaves, flowers, and fence. And you know what? This is where I diverge from their just instructions because this brush just seems a little bit too big for me to get in these small areas where it's talking about behind the leaves and the fence and everything. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start using a smaller brush. They might be, well, whoever cre created this is obviously a much better painter than I am, but I just don't have that much control over a big brush like this. I'm not going to rinse it though, because it might, they might call for it again. So I'm just going to set it aside for now. Okay. And here's where I'm referring to this picture on the step-by-steps, this here, where it says step two. And you can see where they're painting. And that's what I'm going to try to attempt. All these little nooks and crannies between the leaves and things, I think. Kind of this whole background area. I think I'm going to add a little bit more green to it too. And this is where this painting becomes yours because if there's a color, if there's a technique, if there's an area that you don't want painted, if there's a detail that you don't like, you just omit it from your painting. And that makes your painting very personal and it makes it yours. And it's in areas like this where I could use that big brush probably, but I'm still going to go ahead and stick with the smaller one. I just feel more comfortable with it. But I think you get the idea. Take a look at that picture and use your own judgment. And I will see you back here for step three. It's still step two. Um, I didn't realize there were so many parts to step two. I've done the, the first part, which is painting the background, um, all the dark areas. And now I'm moving on to the second step of step two, I guess where it talks about using the number 12 bright brush and the mix to paint loose leaves where dark area meets light area of the background, blending slightly with the mix already on the canvas. Refer to photo. So what I'm doing, I have the smaller brush and I'm just gonna take this, looking at the picture, it looks like they just have like kind of little leaf shapes painted in this dark color, sort of here where the two colors meet. So it's almost giving the impression of little um, leaves that you sort of see, but can't quite see. And it looks like they've done it, you know, around here and around the edges of all of these flowers that are in the that we painted with the light color earlier
and then using the same brush, still without rinsing. I have not rinsed the brush that I've been painting with yet. Um, to blend small amounts of Mars black in the really dark areas. So I would say like dark in, back in here. I'm going to have to go, just go ahead and, and grab some black straight out of my carton and add some black here. So you get a little bit of con that contrast. So I'm going to be working on this for a little bit. And I will join you again then at the start of step three. Hello, I completed step two as they were instructing. Step three is all about the fence. So we're going to use um, mix four parts titanium white. One, two, three, four with two parts uh, burnt umber. Let me use a different brush for that. which is your brown color here. One, two. Okay, go ahead and mix that together. They make it look pretty light in the picture, so. Oh, well, that looks pretty good. So it says use vertical or vertical strokes for the post and horizontal strokes for the rail, which makes sense. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint the whole fence like this. Let me see, loosely paint fence. So I guess it doesn't have to be like a super great job. And um, and then we save the brush for step four. And then we'll, I'll join you again for step four. So I'm not really sure I understood what they meant by loosely paint the fence. So I just went ahead and I painted the whole fence. Um, I'm saved my, I saved my brush for step four. And the next part, the first part of step four is to use that brush and titanium white to paint the light areas of the fence post and rail, blending with the mix already on the canvas. So that I can do. And I'll refer to the picture to help me understand what parts are light and what parts are dark. Or you can just go ahead and make up your own, I would think. Go ahead and do this and then the next part is to use the same brush that you've already used the light brown and the white with to um, dip in some burnt umber and then paint the dark areas and so all of those colors your light brown and your white and your dark uh, burnt umber are all going to sort of blend together which is why you're not rinsing your brush in between I'll go ahead and work on that and um, leave you to it as well. We'll meet back up for step five. I finished step four. I may have actually gone a little bit too far and done maybe part of step five as well, but I've got it um, looking good, I think. <laughs> And in step five, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add more details. We're going to add more shading and more highlights, I believe, just to bring out the texture of the fence to make it really pop. So here's where we start using a smaller brush, number two round brush, or, you know, even smaller. I might even go a, a little bit smaller. Um, and we're going to mix four parts burnt umber with one part Maurer's black. So this is going to get dark. And then we're going to paint where the deepest shading is. So here where the two fence parts meet and kind of on the back side here and 
maybe down here around the flowers, down here. It says use same brush to blend burnt umber on post and rail, allowing brush to run out of paint for texture, which is kind of what I was doing already. And then we save the brush for bullet two, which means we use that same brush to mix one part burnt umber with one part titanium white. And then we use that to paint highlights next to the dark texture lines on the post and rail. So where there's a dark area, we're gonna paint a light area right next to it to make that contrast really stand out. I'll go ahead and I'll mix up my paint. Calls for four parts. Burnt umber. And then one part, Mars Black. And I don't need a lot of paint, I think, because there aren't a lot of these shadow areas that I need to cover. Okay, so here's where we start painting things like this. Basically the hole where the the rail goes through the, the upright post and then I'm going to go ahead and paint and paint that whole edge there because that would all be shadow and then underneath here as well And here's where looking at the photo helps. You're not quite sure where they have dark areas and where they have light areas, but um, just kind of use your own judgment as well. Just think, eh, I think a little shadow should live there. And um, go ahead and add a shadow. Yeah, so um, I'll go ahead and work on that. I'll probably go ahead and do both bullet points of step five and I'll join you back again for the beginning of step six which is where we actually start to paint the leaves and then step seven and eight are the flowers. Um, take your time. This is a very detailed picture. I mean as far as um, getting all of the different highlights and textures and and all that and the flowers themselves will be pretty detailed. So um, take your time and uh, make it look the way you want it to. Okay, enough talking. <laughs> okay, uh, my fence is about as good as I can get it. And if I keep fiddling with it, it's not going to look good anymore. So <laughs> anyway, on to step six. On step six, the first part asks you to mix up uh, titanium white and green oxide for a light green mix. And then you set that aside and then you use the number two round brush to mix one part green oxide, one part white, and a small amount of Mars black to make a darker green mix. And then working one leaf at a time, we'll be sh painting the shading with the darker green and then uh, paint the rest of the leaf with the lighter mix. So um, here's how I think that's going to look. And I can always add white to this if I if I want to, or green, depending on you know, how I think it looks. Okay, so there's my light green. I say set that aside. I'm gonna set the, set the paintbrush aside as well. And then I use another brush here to do the one part green with one part white. and just a little bit of black. And I'm gonna mix that up to make this darker green mix. 
No, 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 that's looking. No, I don't like that. Add more green, and I'm going to add more white. Because it looks kind of gray. So I have my dark mix and I have my light mix now. My two brushes and it says working one leaf at a time. I'm going to uh, do the shading with the darker green. So let me work on this. And referring to the picture, I mean generally the underside of things or where it you would imagine it would be shadowed, uh, will be dark. And then obviously the rest of the leaf is going to be lighter. And then it says to blend those two colors. So it's not just a, so you can't see that definitive line between where the dark stops and the light starts. So kind of like that, I guess. And obviously you can go back and touch it up if you want. Okay, go on to my next one. This one looks like they have this side, the darker side. I mean, try to figure out where the light is coming from in this picture. Um, I'm guessing it's coming from this side. And so everything on this side is going to be lighter because the light would be shining on it more intensely and then anything on this side would tend to be darker because it would be more in the shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and work on those leaves. It asks you to save the mix and don't rinse the brushes I believe not for a while like we've been doing pretty much all along. So I'm going to go ahead and work on my leaves and I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Okay, I finished the first bullet point of step six, uh, which is um, painting each leaf individually here with the two different shades. And um, then I went back and I added some more dark background up here because I, I think I did, I came over a little bit too far with the bright with the yellow in that. And then um, the bullet point number two under step six uh, says to use the round brush and the darker green mix from bullet point one to freehand leaf tips in the dark background, blending away from the leaf tip and allowing the brush to run out of paint. I didn't understand at first what that meant, but I figured it out by looking at the painting and thinking, hmm, it would really look nice if there were some more uh, leaves back there. And so I figured out that that's actually what they meant. And so I'm using that mix then to paint some of my own leaves back here. And I think they want, you know, it says, um, you know, allow the brush to run out of paint, move away from the leaf tip. So basically, just they want the hint of more leaves in the background here. And so we're just kind of doing your own shape. That's going to be darker than the ones you just painted, but lighter than the dark background. And I think that is the intent. I'm going to go ahead and work on some of those. Um, I don't know how many I'm going to add. And of course you can add however many you want. And you can make them look however you want them to look. Okay, so happy freehanding leaves. And then um, that will be the end of step six. And... Uh, we'll move on to step seven, which is the start of the flowers. The next step, step seven, 
is uh, where we start uh, doing the fun stuff and part uh, painting the flowers. It says to use a number 12 bright brush to mix two parts violet, two parts cobalt blue, and a small amount of Mars black. And then painting each flower separately, like we did the leaves, use the mix to paint the centers of the flowers nearly to the edge of the flower. Okay, use same brush to blend titanium white around perimeter of flowers blending inward with short choppy strokes. Okay, so let's see if I can figure out how to do this. So first off, we're gonna mix our paint. So one, two, violet, and one, two, cobalt, and small amount of Mars black. Okay. A little dabble, do ya? I can always add more. So mix it all up here. Oops. Okay. So I start in the center and then I go nearly to the edge. Oops. Uh, I have paint where I don't want it yet. If you ever get paint where you don't want it, and a good tr a trick to try and remove it without uh, damaging the rest of your painting is to just dip a little bit of a paper towel in water and then just dab that area. And I found that if you get it quick enough, you can, um, you can get rid of most of the paint that splashed where you didn't want it. I'll start with this one right in the center. Paint the center of the flowers nearly to the edge. So I guess I'll sort of do this. I'm kind of using circular brush strokes because the flowers are kind of circular. So to me, it seems like it would add a little bit of that uh, texture looking. Okay. And then using the same brush blend titanium white around the perimeter. Maybe I will try the Titanium white with this one first. Let's see, blend titanium white around perimeter, blending inward. Okay, it doesn't really say if you should go all the way to the center or not with your white blending, but um, I'm going to leave the center dark for now, just because I think it looks better, or it just, it looks good for now. And I'm going to go ahead and try this with every other flower. I'll join you again. Um, when I've had a chance to work on all the flowers, just doing what's in step seven. Here is how it looks after I completed step seven. 
I did um, sort of deliberately make these flowers on this side a little bit darker than the ones out here because they're that much farther away from the light. It appears that the light's coming from the right here. I don't know if this is exactly what they wanted it to look like, but I like it. I've also went ahead and started step eight. This is um, our last step. I used the round brush to mix two parts titanium white and two parts violet here to create a light purple color. And then I used two parts titanium white and two parts cobalt blue to create this, this light blue mix here. Painting each flower separately, use the light blue mix to paint flower petals in loose X shapes alternating with light purple mix around perimeters of flowers. And then use the same brush and titanium white to paint loose highlights on the flower petals, blending slightly with the petals already painted on the canvas. I'm going to alternate and it's, it says to use the same brush, but I have a brush for blue and I have a brush for purple. I think that's gonna work better. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and start up here in the top corner. And it says loose X's alternating. Not very good X's. That's not really looking like what it is. Hmm. Hmm. Wondering if I should add more violet because that just seems a little bit bright. Oh, there. Let's see what that looks like. Does that really say continue it into the center of the flower? But, um, What do you think? That doesn't exactly look like the pictures. I'm gonna work on it. And I'm sure yours will look completely, could look completely different from mine as well, because everybody has their own painting style and um, different strokes and different sense of color. I wouldn't expect yours to look like mine, but work on yours until it looks like how you like it. I'm going to go ahead and keep working on mine, my flowers. I'll come back when it comes time to add the titanium white to paint the highlights on it. I completed the first part of step eight and now I'm ready to go to the last step here, the last part of step eight. Just use the same brush you've been using and titanium white to paint loose highlights on the flower petals, blending slightly with petals already painted on canvas. You just want a little bit of white on the brush. And I did rinse my brush, which I probably shouldn't have, but I can go ahead and put some blue on it. Just want to kind of highlight the edges of some of the leaves.
kind of having a hard time figuring out where to put the highlights. This again is all, you know, what looks good to you. This is a challenging painting, there's no doubt, so at least for me it has been. It's also one of the longer ones. If you look on the front, it did say uh, two and a half hours approximately, which I figure was a good one to do for while well, we're still painting at home because you could take your time. And if it took you longer than two and a half hours, you were at home and uh, and you can always come back to it, cover your paints and come back to it later that day, another day. Your highlights will probably look completely different, which is fine. This is the last part of the last step. So when we're finished with that, we're finished with the painting. And here we have uh, my finished floral country fence painting. I found it uh, challenging and interesting. Some of the blending techniques were, um, I struggled with a little bit and also some of the brush strokes. So I don't think my flowers look like the flowers in the picture necessarily, but um, I'm happy with them and that's what counts. And I hope that you're happy with your painting as well. Thank you so much for joining me for this Art with Flair painting program through the Grays Lake Area Public Library. Please check our newsletter and our website for other programs that are available. Um, and I hope to see you again soon. Again, thank you for joining me. Take care and so long until next time. Bye bye.